Hello everybody, Ben here and welcome to part 2 of the history of the Mayton and Hambleton Railway. In the first part of this series, we looked at the history of the line and the, where it actually runs to. In this video, we are going to look at the locomotives of the MHR from opening to closure. Number 1, an 040 tank engine built in 1849 by Sharp Stewart and was sold to a railway contractor. It was used alongside several other locomotives of the same type and was used on the construction of the MHR. Once the construction was finished, this locomotive was bought by the railway to be their very first locomotive and was painted in the railway's early livery of, line, of lined red with gold lining. It was used on the first passenger train on the railway and the early, early passenger trains on the railway as well. It was moved to freight trains in the 1880s as well as being repainted into a lined blue livery with red lining and was moved to the upper level. The body was scrapped in the early 1900s, however the boiler was used as a stationary boiler which only went to a scrapyard in 1909. Numbers 203, Centurion and Brunswick, a class of two 040 tender engines also built by Sharp Stewart in 1857 and, was bought and were bought new by the railway. They were used on the early goods trains on the railway and were later moved to the mixed goods trains as more powerful locomotives came to the line. In the 1880s they were painted from the railway's early lined red livery with gold lining to the later lined blue with red lining. They were both scrapped in 1884 when they became too underpowered for them to be useful. They named after the Royal Navy warships HMS Centurion and HMS Brunswick. Number 4 Goliath, an 040 Nielsen piano tank built in 1853 and bought in 1860 used on the early upper level trains but only could take four or five loaded empty wagons up and down the line so it was quite an underpowered locomotive. It was painted in the early livery red with gold lining however it only received the blue livery in the in 1900 as it was never actually scrapped and used as the work to right up until closure of the railways and it was almost the railway's pet locomotive and it was actually preserved. In the 1920s it fell out of use and this is why it was preserved as it had still it still had most of its original components. This locomotive is named after the warship HMS Goliath. Number 5. Seahorse, an 060 long boiler tank engine built by Robin Stevenson and Co in 1862 and was used on the heavier trains of, on the upper level of the line, hauling long strings of children wagons. It was used primarily on the coal trains but could also be seen on limestone and chart trains if no other locomotive was available. It was painted in the original livery of early of red with gold lining was later painted in the blue livery with red lining. It was scrapped in 1886 and it is named after HMS Seahorse. Number 6 Falcon, an 060 long boiler tender engine also built by Robert Stevenson and Co and arrived in 1862 on the same train as number 5 pulled by a northeastern railway locomotive. This locomotive was used on the heaviest goods trains on the lower level of the line but could be used on other freight trains alongside numbers 2 and 3 painted in the early livery of red and gold lining, but was later painted in the lined blue with red lining livery. It was scrapped in 1893 and was named after HMS Falcon. Numbers 7 and 9, Harrier and Hornet, a class of two 040 saddle tank engines built in 1863 and 1864 respectively, both built by Peckett, and these were used on the limestone trains and chalk trains. They were almost identical, however number 9 has half an inch larger cylinders which makes it slightly more powerful a slightly more powerful locomotive but otherwise there's no difference in tractive effort between the two locos. They were both painted in the early livery, the early lined red with gold lining but in the 1880s they were painted in the later livery with red lining, both scrapped in 1897. Number 7 was scrapped in, 90, in 1897 however number 9 was used on the wharf branch trains when that opened and it actually only got scrapped in 1927. These locomotives are named after the Royal Navy warships HMS Harrier and HMS Hornet. Number 8 and 10, Vanguard and Triumph, class of 2060 tender engines that were both built in 1873 by Bayer Peacock and the locomotives are identical and don't have any other differences apart from number 8 has a 4 wheel tender and number 10 has a 6 wheel tender which gives it a longer range. These locomotives on, are used on coal, chalk and limestone trains as well as the general mixed goods trains on the lower level of the railway for these locomotives being used for quite a long time. 
They were painted in the original livery of red and with gold lining, but were later painted in the blue with red lining. Number 8 and 10 are named after the Royal Navy warships HMS Vanguard and HMS Triumph. They were both scrapped in 1896. Number 11. ALF. A 440 tank engine built by Bayer Peacock in 1879 to haul the main passenger trains on the line, but could also be seen on the fast van trains that ran on the line at this time as well. This locomotive did not, did not last very long, however, as in 1882 it was destroyed in an accident when it was pulling a fast van train and derailed while running over the Swaddington Viaduct. Sadly, the crew died as the locomotive fell to the bottom of the valley. However, the guards van and a few of the vans stayed on the track. It was the last locomotive to be painted in the old red with gold lining. After this, the fast van train stopped running on the railway. It is, a, it is named after the Royal Navy warship HMS Alf. Number 12, Kingfisher. A 240 tender engine that was built in 1871 by Sharp Stewart, but was bought to the railway in 1882 after number 11 accident. It was used like number 11 on the main passenger trains that ran on the railway. It was the first locomotive to be painted in the new blue livery with red lining. But as it was a passenger locomotive, it also had gold lining, while the goods locomotives had just red lining. Sold to the family that bought the railway in 1908 after being replaced by number one Perseus and was used with their private inspection saloon. Also, occasionally taking goods like coal and sometimes a van to the family's house. It was never scrapped and is named after HMS Kingfish. Mid period locomotives. Number one Perseus. An 044 tank engine built in 1898 and is named after the 1897 built HMS Perseus. It's bought new directly from Sharp Stewart, but was modified a little when it came to the railway and was later fitted with a much more enclosed cab when it, as when it first came to the railway. It had a very open cab. It's used on the main passenger trains, but is occasionally used on the workmen's trains when number two Brilliant is under overhaul or fails. It is in the lined blue livery with red and gold lining as it is a passenger locomotive. It was scrapped in 1967 and is named after HMS Perseus. It is made out of a Dapol M7 modified. Number two, brilliant. A 060 Terrier tank engine bought from the, the LSBCR and they sold several for sale in the early 1900s and is named after HMS Brilliant. Once it arrived on the railway, it was modified slightly to make it more useful on the railway, like increasing the capacity of the bunker and the tanks, so it had a longer range. It was used on the workmen's trains and mixed goods trains alongside number three. It is also a replacement for number one if it is under overhaul on the main passenger trains or fails. It is in that line blue livery with red lining. It would be made with a dappled terrier modified and painted blue. It was never scrapped and it was safe. Number three, Revenge. An 060 tender engine built by Armstrong Whitworth in 1895, named after the 1895 built HMS Revenge. In 1903 it was modified again to have a tender cab for running in reverse and to protect the crew from the rain and bad weather which is which often experienced and to also protect them from flying coal when the tender gets light and starts jumping around. It is used on the coal, coal chalk and limestone trains alongside number 4 Colossus. It is in, also used on the mixed goods trains alongside Brilliant. It is in a lined blue livery with red lining so it is a goods locomotive be made with an 060 tender engine, modified with a tender cab and a, num and a few other modifications as well. It was scrapped in 1969 and is named after HMS Revenge. Number 4, Colossus. 262 tank engine that was built in 1911 by Bay Peacock and is named after HMS Colossus. It pulls the very heaviest trains on the line, usually coal trains. However, it also was used on the gunpowder and armaments trains during the World Wars alongside Revenge and some northeastern railway locomotives as well. These heavy trains often ran to the wharf and also to Merton as well. Colossus is one of the most powerful locomotives on the line, but engine crews like it as they don't have to work it hard during bad weather with a heavy train painted in a lined blue livery with red lining and made possibly going to be made with a prairie tra chassis with an a modified Langley I3 or N2 and it was never scrapped and was safe for preservation. Number 5, Eagle, an 040 battery electric shunter built by the British Thompson Houston Company in 1903. This is named after HMS Eagle. These locomotives were built to shunt at the wharf on the wharf branch after the director decided to experiment with electric traction on the section 
as the steam engines were struggling and there had also been close calls with fire in the wharf as well. It was proved to be a success but did have some problems. It had been charged during the night with power generated from the river stern flint. It is used to trunk wagons on the wharf sidings and into the factories as well due to the short wheelbase of this locomotive. It is used for moving goods between the wharf and Mitton goods yard to be taken further afield by northeast by the NER. It is made out of a catered four wheel electric locomotive painted blue and lined out with red lining. It is named after the shore establishment of the Royal Navy and was scrapped in 1967. Number 6 Rodney An 060 tank engine that was bought second hand in 1883 and was built by Sharp Stewart and then given an overhaul. Rodney is named after HMS Rodney. It is used to shunt and haul trains from the colliery on the high left of the rower and because of its limited coal capacity of bunker it refills in the colliery while shunting there but it is also used to haul empty wagons back up the line as well. It is made out of a dapple terrier chassis and a cut down ginty body. It is in a lime blue livery with red lining. Number 7 Hamilton An 060 saddle tank engine bought second hand and built by Hunslet. It was regarded as a powerful locomotive and has been used as a replacement for number two if it is needed. It is used to haul trains of chalk, coal and limestone. Probably be made out with a P and D Marsh white metal austerity kit, modified to look like to look older and fitted on an austerity chassis. Like all the goods locomotives, it is in a lined blue livery with red lining and was scrapped in 1943. Number eight, Orion. An 040 tank engine that was built in 1878 by Manning Wardle. It is in a small saddle. Ta it is a small tank engine, but has a high tractive effort due to its small wheels and large cylinders. It is used on the mixed goods trains and on the and the passenger trains on the upper level of the line. When it originally came to the railway, it had an open cab. In 1903, it was, it was modified to be more modern and ha to have a less open cab. Orion looks somewhat similar to a Northeastern Railway H class. It is named after the Orion constellation. It is painted in a lime blue livery with red lining and wasn't scrapped and was saved for preservation. Number 9 Majestic An 062 side tank that was built by Kitson and Co and was bought directly from them in 1897 and was modified slightly. It was also regarded as a powerful locomotive and can be used as a replacement for number 2 or number 1 which is also known as a very fast engine. It is allowed to run on NER slash LNER metals as well if it's needed. It is used on coal deliveries to local northeastern railway sheds because it has a long range due to its large bunker and water tank. It is named after HMS Majestic. It is in a lined blue livery with red lining and was never scrapped and was safe for preservation. Number 10 Vulcan. This locomotive actually has a bit of a mystery behind it as it was said to be built in 1922 and some documents prove this as well as a photograph. However, some other documents and other photographs say it came to the railway in 1925, so no one is actually sure when it actually came to the railway. A Vulcan was built by the Sentinel Wagon Works & Co. as a prototype of the later LNER Y1 and Y3 Sentinels. This locomotive was painted in the goods delivery of blue with red lining. It was named after the planet Vulcan and it was scrapped in 1965. Later Locomotives Number 11 Sea Dragon a massive, overpowered for the small railway, a Waito tender engine built by Bayer Peacock in 1927 for export to another European country. However, this other, along with others of its class, was cancelled from Bayer Peacock, so it was bought for a bargain price brand new from Bayer Pe Peacock. Sea Dragon is, named, is nicknamed Long Tom. It, this is used on the very heaviest trains on the railway. It is allowed to run on LNER metals to deliver goods. It's painted in the goods livery with red lining and scrapped in 1953. Number 12, Hector. An old Faro rail motor tank engine built by Sharp Stewart in 1919 and was bought second hand in 1928 and is used on the wharf branch trains hauling passenger trains to meet the boats that dock there take to workers to the wharf as well. It has small side tanks and a bogey coach attached at the back of the locomotive. It is painted in a lined blue livery with red and gold lining while the coach is in a lined, is in red, in a red livery with, line, with gold lining. It is named after HMS Hector and was scrapped in 1951 after a number of years in storage. Number 13, Olympus, an 060 saddle tank engine built by Andrew Barclay in 1929 was bought new directly from Andrew Barclay as the cylinders are 16 by 22 inches. It makes it a quite powerful locomotive 
and it's used on the lower level of the railway and used on the chalk and limestone trains during the interwar period. It's painted in a lime blue livery with red lining and was sold on in 1938. It's named after HRS Olympus. Numbers 14 and 15, Lightning and Lively, class of 060 saddle tank engines built by Hunslet during World War II as they're the, the austerity class and were later sold on later sold to the MHR, placing older locomotives around on this section. They are both used on the upper level of the line on coal, chalk and limestone trains. They are powerful locomotives and locomotive crews like them. Later in their life on the MHR, they were fitted with diesel ejectors and a mechanical stoker, which means they only needed a driver to operate them, which makes them cheaper for the railway. They were both painted in the line blue livery with red lining. Number 15 was scrapped in 1973, however number 16 was saved for preservation. Numbers 15 and 16 are named after the Royal Navy warships HMS Lightning and HMS Lively. Number 16, Centaur. A Bobo diesel that was bought in 1957 from Anello Railway. It is used on the upper level of the railway, the passenger and mixed goods trains, as well as some limestone trains as well. It is liked on the railway as it is a cheaper alternative than the steam locomotive that it replaced. And it was useful when the railway closed, so it was sold onto Anello Railway. It is painted in a blue livery with a half yellow panel on each end, just running up to the window. On the bottom of the body is a small thin red stripe. It is named after the Royal Navy warship HMS Centaur. Train lengths. The train lengths are eight four wheel 50, 10 foot wagons including brake van, five 15 foot wheelbase wagons including brake van, two bogey coaches and five four wheel coaches. And that's all of the history that I've written so far for the history of the Midton and Hamilton Railway. Maybe in the future if I improve the history I might do this video again or I might do a similar sort of video for other railways that I've done the history for as well. Thank you for watching this video by me, please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below with some video ideas or feedback. Thanks for watching, goodbye.